Welcome back, everyone. We're with Wendell Clark. Can you believe it? He's here on the red couch. I know. His color might be blue, but it's red today here for <laughs> Rogers. Welcome back, Wendell. Uh, now, I want to talk to you a little bit about your time with the Leafs. You had a few stints with the Leafs. Um, any friends, family that you made that will be with you for life? I'm sure you have. <laughs> no, well, pretty much any time you're with teammates, you're, you're always together. You're always going to be tight. Even even after you're done playing, you don't see each other as much as you used to because you're you all go on to your different areas. You mm -hmm. live throughout North America or the world now, and but a lot of the charity aspects that we do, we come back and you you run into each other and you're all thick as uh, tight again when you get back. So you're you don't keep as close as you you should because everybody's all over. Mm -hmm. But uh, as soon as you get back together again, everything is just like you're on the same team. There's always golf season too, right? Oh yeah, well yeah, golf season. <laughs> I don't want to talk about golf right no. now. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's a, that's that's a bad situation, situation right now. Um, but we, we talk about ambassadors in sports. You look at kids like Sidney Crosby coming up, mm -hmm. Jerome Ginla. Um, who are the real ambassadors of hockey right now? Well, those guys would be the ambassadors of, of our game uh, right now. You're, you're Sidney Crosby's, you're Ovechkin's, yeah. uh, you're Dion Phaneuf's when he comes to Toronto and the mark he's going to make and how he plays. Those are our young guys and, and energetic and uh, up and coming and and those are our faces of the game. What's the responsibility, you think, uh, for, 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 for young guys coming up? Uh, do you think that there is a responsibility mm -hmm. to be a, a, a role model? Did you feel that when you were, when you were playing? Well, I think you, you always have that when you're playing a professional sport, and it's more felt when you're playing a Canadian team because this is everywhere you go, whether yeah. you're on the street or in the rink. Uh, you're recognizable, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a part of it in Canada more than in the United States. Yeah. Uh, just because you are so visual here and everybody knows who you are. So it's, it's, it's more of a role model in Canada than anywhere. Can I ask you about hockey. the Tigers thing? What do you think about it? Oh, oh the Tigers Talking thing? about yeah. golf. I, I thought we were a, talking I golf. Don't know if, I don't know enough about it, and that's, that's different. That's, yeah. that's a yeah. whole it's completely different. different eh? That's not just golf. That's, that's different. Well, I think, and I, we were talking about the difference between you know Canadian players or, or the players in the U.S. There's yeah. really something about the, the role model aspect here in Canada. They're a celebrity, but they're really something for those kids to look up to. They're going to the rinks every day early in the morning to be like their favorite superstar. And you know, you'd see the little kids with the Wendell Clark jerseys, and you knew how special you were to them. And I think that's what's so important and so great about our country here. No, everybody, everybody takes. We grew up with it. And everybody has it, and it's. Uh, it's gotten even bigger because every game's on TV every night. Mm -hmm. So you're catching your your favorite player like the Sidney Crosby who plays out of Pittsburgh, but mm -hmm. you can live in Canada and see every game that he plays. Yeah. In the old days, you didn't see that. Uh, not as much coverage. Not as much, yeah. The physicality aspect uh, uh, of things now uh, in the game, when you look at the headshots, that's been in the news a lot mm -hmm. lately. Um, what, what do you think about that? Uh, and because, I mean, you are a very physical player. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's just that we've, as the game's progressed, we've speeded the game up faster and faster. We've taken out clutching and holding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've taken out uh, the red line in some cases. Uh, and, and so we've speeded the game up. So now the players are skating faster than ever. They're bigger than ever. So they're bigger and they're faster, and we've taken out some of the rules to make the game faster. So when kids are hitting each other now, and then as you get older, you get bigger and you hit guy with more velocity, mm -hmm. yeah. it's going to hurt more. And, and that's just with speeding the game up. And that's what's coming across with a lot of the head stuff. And because this generation in the last 20 years or so has wore face masks their whole life through minor hockey, mm -hmm. the head has always been so well protected. If you watch minor hockey games, there's sticks and stuff going off heads all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. But now when you get to the pro level and the junior level, when now you're getting full grown mm -hmm. and you're taking most of the face mask off, you're still kind of playing the same way because you grew right. up with face masks. Do you think that different rules should be implemented? I think over time they will find ways to tweak it. You, mm -hmm. you remember when you're playing a game that's been around forever, you just can't, okay, we have five head injuries. Yeah. Let's change all the rules in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because next year it's going to be shoulder injuries. And right. next year is we knees coming out or who knows what the injuries are. So you can't always just change the game because of what there's a rash. But the out. game does evolve. It does. Right? It does evolve yeah. and you're always tweaking it. Every year, you know, you talk to the GMs and the governors are always doing meetings at the NHL level. and. And in minor hockey, all the associations are always doing meetings about how do we tweak it. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to just change it because you're not changing it back again. Yeah. So you're always doing and, and, and studying how do we change it a little bit. And, and now that we've opened it up and created a real fast game, now we have to maybe find a way to slow it down a bit mm -hmm. so we don't have those mm -hmm. same uh, mm -hmm. hits the same way. But that, that's all part of uh, tweaking the game. And, yeah. and in saying that the head injuries, there's more coverage now than ever. Yeah. yeah. Remember all the games that go on every single day in every town 
Yeah. So, you so, know, there's yeah, okay. 4 so, o'clock on out of right, every right, day. Right, right. There's something going you on. Can, you can tune, tune into any game at any point Anytime. in time. Like, I can watch a Calgary game at any point in time when yeah, I want and, to. And you take all the minor hockey games that go on. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. There's well, more people probably in Blue Mountain today going to hurt their knee than... Yeah. But who's and covering that? Right, right, and right, nobody right, covers right. A, mm -hmm. an accident on a ski hill, and they do that to themselves. Well, we're talking about protecting your face. I mentioned during our first break, he doesn't got a hockey face. He's got a pretty good-looking face. <laughs> and thank, thank God. He's flirting with our guests. Well, he's so great. I'm, I'm telling you, like, one of my Listen, loves right here. Just don't put the, 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 the uh, uniform on or it's over. It's all over. <laughs> um, no, but I, again, he has a nice face and good thing because he could be the face of his restaurant. And of course, nice his lovely face. face here on his Wendell book. All proceeds go to charity as well. Help us support yeah. our local hospitals that we were just talking about earlier in the break. But of course, Wendell's, which we're saying, opening our community and you're the face of that and a beautiful face it is but opening tomorrow which is really great and I want to remind all our viewers where that is it's right at the border actually of Mississauga and Oakville mm -hmm. uh, give them the address actually give them this, the exact address if it you could. is 370 Dundas Street West Dundas Dundas and Trafalgar and there's Oakville. a huge entertainment venues there there's so much in that neighborhood of course a great place to come we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, your menu and what the, the highlights of your new location I'm curious what's your favorite thing on the menu my favorite thing is the Wendell burger and the Wendell steak. So you had okay. a name after yourself, I had a name of course. Of the two things I like. The best things. Can you make those? Hey, you don't. You don't want me in the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> You're not a good chef. You don't want me in huh? the kitchen, not unless it's a barbecue in the summer. <laughs> yeah, or if it's on ice. Can you imagine if it's on ice? I want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to ask you more about the book, though. Right. Um, how did this all come about? I'm, I'm just flipping through it here. There's some great photographs well, of you. Well, there's great photos of, of his family as and as well as his wife and 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 daughter which is so beautiful and also all these old pictures of you back in the day what was it like for you growing up did you always know you wanted to play for the leaves too or what was this transition for you no you never when growing up uh, in Saskatchewan small town you hockey seemed too far away to ever make it yeah we just caught hockey night in Canada uh, on Saturday so to get there that seemed so far away mm -hmm. and that was too good and then you just gradually progress to different levels and you finally end up getting there but it's uh, something you always dreamed about, never thinking you could actually do it. And uh, so, th so the book is really just starts from uh, when I was a kid till basically now. But it probably uh, emulates a lot of kids that, and players that did what I did. They mm -hmm. come from small towns. If they went through the pictures, they'd recognize they'd have done it, even coming from a different small town. Yeah, that's the same progression I took. So the book is a, a coffee table version with a lot of pictures and stories throughout uh, my life. So kids, you're on the right track. There you You're go. On the right track. Our director wants to know what your mo what the most dreaded team that you ever faced was. Most dreaded team. Yeah, did you have a team that you you faced and you just. No, I don't know if it was a dreaded team. I, the Oilers, obviously, in the '80s when they were winning the cups, and uh, we yeah. were a great team at times. But uh, you know, you the old days, you go into New Jersey, and the building wasn't very exciting, and they were up and coming team as uh, as well. But. You never really dreaded anybody. Listen, yeah, I could talk to you. I could, listen, I could talk to you for hours, but we, we got to go. Listen, folks, get out to the restaurant, 370 Dundas Street East, Wendell Clark's Classic Grill and Sport Lounge. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so Thank much you. for Appreciate being it. here. Thank you. We're going to be back after the break with more daytime. Stick around. We're back.